Hey everybody, we're back. Uh, Chris here. Blythe. Blythe there. Again. Um, and uh, it's a few days before Thanksgiving actually, so uh, Blythe is kind enough to come in the studio with me to record this thing. And this is one of my favorite activities, and uh, what exercise should you complete before working on this activity? Exercises, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Definitely the momentum ones. And where we have collisions. Right, so uh, we're going to take our little planetoid ship, so you should probably also do the planetoids activity as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the planetoid ship in the momentum activity can fly into this blob here, uh, so it can smack into this thing. And then, so that's, that's already what the momentum activity can do, but the fun thing we're going to do here is that this blob is connected to the spring and so you fly into it, there's a momentum conserving collision, uh, but then that compresses the spring and then, and then you start oscillating back and forth. So, uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So right now we're basically starting from the momentum code and we have to add a spring force to it. Um, so Blythe, if you wanna go ahead and open up that code. This should have the same rules as we had before, right? Mm -hmm. So if we play it. So go ahead and hit up arrow to That's right. fly into the thing. We're gonna launch the ship. Go a little faster, baby. Hits the blob and just compresses it. That's right, there's no restoring force here, so it's just going to drift off to the left. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you want to stop and hit play, try to do it a little faster. Yeah. Um, maybe it'd be a little more convincing that there's no restoring force. <laughs> Alright, so we set it off. I'm going to launch the ship here. Get going at speed. Collides. Yeah, the blob is very heavy, so yeah. after it collides, it's going pretty slow. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you give it one more try and see, just fire those thrusters okay. as much as you can. See how fast you get it to go. All right, so I'm gonna launch the ship. Uh -huh. Try to go really fast. Yeah, so there's no restoring forces. The spring is not pushing that blob back to where it was. Right. Just gets pushed off. So we want to add mm -hmm. a response to the spring. Yeah, so let's take a quick look at the code. Do you want to look through the code real quick and just see what looks familiar? Yeah. So we still have setup of our ship and the blob. Now we have this L relaxed variable. That's going to relate to the relaxed position of the spring. We still have um, these variables to keep track of. Um, the mass of the ship and the... I'm supposed to use my hands, aren't I? <laughs> the mass of the ship and the thrust that we can apply through the arrows on our keyboard. And uh, as we update each time step, each time step we're updating the velocity of the ship, the position of the ship, and the position of the blob. But we don't have, right now, any delta Vx. So we don't have any external forces um, you know, beyond the collision occurring and changing the dynamics that way. Yep. So, so this is all, uh, especially that this part of the code, th this, this is all um, basically the same thing as the momentum activity. Uh, if you can just go up a little bit. Um, 
uh, like you were saying that we're we're advancing the position of we're advancing the position. If, if you want to look at the update location section. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're advancing the, the position of the blob, we're advancing the position of the ship, things like that. Um, and all that is, is basically the same as the momentum activity. So, And by the way, uh, in the momentum activity, so maybe the, one of the main differences between this activity and the, and the momentum activity is that in the momentum activity, we never had the blob accelerate. So we would fly into it. Mm -hmm. And that would change its velocity, but then would just sort of drift. Um, but we never had to, uh, we never had to update the velocity of the blob like we did for the ship, because the ship's accelerating all over the place, right? So we have to update that velocity, but we never had to do that with the ship. So one of the things we're going to have to do today, uh, because the blob is attached to the spring, is to be able to to update uh, this uh, this velocity section so that we're updating both the velocity of the ship, which is what we're doing now and also the velocity of the blob. Um, and then towards the bottom of the code, there's just a bunch of stuff for plotting. So I don't know if you want to show that real quick. Yeah, so what, what, quantities, are, what quantities are we plotting here? Uh, so we have a graph of the displacement of the blob from its relaxed position and a graph of the velocity of the blob and then we have um, a drawing of the blob yeah. that's right so we're so this is kind of the the delta x for the the blob how, how far has it moved from like you said how far has it has it moved from its relaxed position uh, and then we're showing the velocity of the blob. We're not actually showing the velocity of the ship, um, which is a long story. Uh, but if you want to have a nice kind of sine wave looking thing, uh, it's better to draw the velocity of the blob. Because the blob is the thing that's actually attached to the spring. Mm -hmm. right? not the ship is only attached to the blob, which is attached to the spring. Um, well, cool. So in the step-by-step -step here, uh, there's a list of things that we need to do in order to get um, in order to get this thing to work. The first one is basically to turn this into code, right? So, you, so if you guys are in a physics class watching this, uh, you're probably familiar with this equation. Um, so this is the force of a spring. Often, uh, you know, f, f equals minus kx, and that's in situations in which uh, x equals zero is right at the relaxed length. So here, uh, we, we have x equals 0 from the origin, which is in the bottom left corner of the screen. So we have to make sure to include this extra L relaxed thing. Um, so I believe that if, if we follow the directions in step 2 here, uh, there's, a bunch of thing, there's a bunch of things that we need to add. Okay. So the first thing is just add a, a couple of variables to the beginning. So that's not too hard. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we already have, uh, so if you want to go to the, the code there. So I believe we already have VX blob up there. Yep. Yes. So you got VX blob, VY blob. The thing that we don't have is we don't have delta VX blob. Um, so we'll need to add that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it ar it's already there, I guess. Oh, yeah. I don't know my own exercise. Um, and then, but at when I'm, sh but we don't have a spring force, I believe, right? So we don't yeah, have those. The thrusters. Right. So we need to add uh, the what is K? This is it the spring coefficient? Spring constant. Spring constant. That's what it is. So I believe that's one of the things we have to add. So. And so here, the spring constant is uh, equal to 0.5. So we'll just go ahead and add that to the beginning somewhere. Doesn't really matter where. Put it near the relaxed length here. Sounds good. Um, what, are the, what are the other things we're supposed to, <laughs> to add? Uh, let's see. Uh, so we have a delta VX blob. We have the VX blob. Okay. So we just need to 
Yeah, Let's the introduce some F spring. Yeah, well, the second bullet is to make sure the update velocity section updates oh. both the velocity of the blob and the, That's right. and the ship. So we go down way. here. Yep. So, so the code should still work the same way that it was. Like it's still not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Why is it not going to do anything? <coughs> well, we still haven't introduced any force to actually accelerate the uh, the blob. Right. We set delta v x blob equal to zero at the beginning, and there's nowhere yet does is it set to anything other than zero. So, um, so if you play it, it's still going to do the same thing. Um, Yep. So it just com compresses, compresses, compresses. So, uh, so somewhere, I don't know, maybe after the update velocity section, we should add uh, the spring force. Yep. Okay. So we've got the spring force here now, um, which is great, but. Uh, it's still not going to do anything, mm -hmm. right? Still need to update or actually give a value to delta vx blob. That's right. So right underneath that, you can write um, delta vx blob. And whenever we write those things, it's always equal to the acceleration times the time interval. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to be the acceleration here? So we're going to take our force and divide by some mass, which to be simple for now, we can just use the mass of the blob. It is bigger than mm -hmm. the ship, and it's the one that it is the thing that is attached to the spring. And then we can multiply that by our time interval. Okay. So now let, let's see if this if this works. So <coughs> Not, that did not bad. go as planned. <laughs> uh, I, I know what you did wrong, Blythe, okay. and I, because I'm a jerk, I didn't tell you what you did wrong. I just sort of let you do it. Um, so, Nothing if you look, moment. what? It's teachable moment. Teachable moment. All right. Here's the thing. Okay. So, uh, what is X here? What does that represent in the code? <laughs> um, the position of the ship. Position of the ship. Huh. Is this a non-zero position right now? <laughs> right. So, is the ship attached to a spring? No. No, the blob is attached to a spring. There we go. A lot of my students do this, but uh, <coughs> all right. Now let's see if it works. Okay. It's gonna launch. Now it pushes it back out. Maybe I should have done it a bit faster. Such a tiny s oscillation. Okay. That looks pretty good though. Yeah. Launch the ship. Oh, compresses and now it's pushed back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see the graph there. Right, so the the graph there is showing that the red line is the velocity, and the blue line is actually not the force. The blue not the blue line is the position of of the blob, uh, and how compressed or not that it is. Um, but that looks pretty good, right? So it's oscillating back and forth. That's kind of what we were uh, hoping that it would do.
And so what we can do now is now that we got sort of the qualitative behavior working, let's add some code in to measure how long it takes for this thing to go back and forth. Uh, I think that's the next step if it's over here. So there's some code that all we got to do is just sort of copy paste it in. Um, and that should uh, give us, <coughs> yeah, so there's a counter here. Um, so we're going to click the button to add this to the code. Mm -hmm. And I forget if we have to add this counter variable to the beginning or not. Um, the basic, is it already there? Oh, yeah. Key All right there, right here. Okay. <coughs> so I just have to go after the display. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I think that's that's one part of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to count how much time does it take for this for the blob to go um, to move away from the relaxed position and back again to the relaxed position. <coughs> so there's yeah. So there's two different things to to copy into there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this code that we've just copied in here is is pretty clever. I, I would say in that it in the way that it calculates this thing and so. It is, it is checking to see how far um, the blob is from the relaxed position. And it basically restarts a counter to zero uh, once it gets back to this position. Once, when, when this quantity is small, in other words, when x blob is almost exactly equal to L relaxed, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly, exactly equal to L, L relaxed because it's, it's zipping past. Uh, and so there's going to be uh, the computer's breaking this up into, into finite periods of time, and so it might not necessarily be perfectly equal to it, but it's going to be very, very close to it. And at that point, we're going to reset the counter, um, but we're going to record how much time that took to this uh, t last time variable. So I just want to go ahead and hit play and see what happens. It should work. So I have this extra information here. Mm -hmm. And just to make your life easier, you might just want to give the ship an initial velocity so yeah. it just immediately slams into the, into the blob. There you go. So it resets as it passes over the, yep. the relaxed position. Yeah, so, so it's kind of, it's counting, 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 but every time that it gets back to the relaxed length, it resets the counter. And so uh, it so happens that it's it's about 14 is the amount of time that it takes to go from the relaxed length to compressed to back again. And that would be the that would correspond to the time it takes to get from it, it crossing over from here to here, right? That's right. So. Uh, yeah, so we're measuring how much time does it take to, to go from the relaxed length to compressed and back, and how much time does it take to go to the relaxed... As it comes coming back, how it's stretched, and then it comes back. Uh, and we're measuring both of those times, and, and those both get written down there. Because it's the absolute value, so it's it's when you come back to this relaxed length is what it does. So, so this is what we get for the, the half cycle time.